So today we're going to be making French toast waffles. Um, it's actually one of my favorites, one of my kids' favorites, my wife's favorites. I made it a few times, so I am going to share it with you guys. Um, first ingredient we got is three eggs, one egg, two eggs. That's my garbage disposal, but the shells will go in the trash. All right, so next I'm going to whisk up the eggs. And this is the... Kind of fun. Let the kids do it, you know. So then I'm gonna add one cup of milk. Yummy. With some more. Oh, I'm about to dump all that sugar in there. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna add a tablespoon of sugar. And another one. And we'll do a third. So three tablespoons of sugar, you can obviously do as much as you want. I think the recipe calls for one, so we're gonna actually do a little extra. Um, a little pinch of salt. That's about a eighth of a teaspoon or a sixteenth of a teaspoon. This is a quarter cup of flour we're gonna add. Now, I could have added everything and then whisked it up, but I like to kind of whisk it up as I go, just so I know everything's kind of getting extra mixed. And, and a little clumps of your flour is gonna be fine. It's not gonna hurt nobody or nothing. It's, going to do what it needs to do. Alrighty, so this is a teaspoon of cinnamon. I had to think for a second. Don't mind me. Um, I'll give that a little mix and then I'll add in our last ingredient. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, but I'm going to ahead and add two. So I did add extra sugar, extra cinnamon, and extra vanilla. Eh, who cares? Three. <laughs> right? It don't matter. It's vanilla. It's not going to kill you. This is the fun part, you know, dipping your bread into the mixture and having fun with it, right? So this is actually very, it's actually one of my favorite breads for doing this. Um, it's thick like Texas toast. So it absorbs really fast. So what I like to do is I try to be quick with it because it will absorb a lot of this. And the next thing you know, you have some really um, good French, well, you have, you run out of French, you run out of bread before you run out of I said that wrong. You don't want to keep it too long in your mixture because you'll run out of mixture before you do bread. So kind of be quick with it. That way you can get, you know, it'll do what it needs. It'll get in there. All right. Okay. All right. So just like that, um, like I said, there, there's actually quite a bit in there. And, you know, you could probably get more than 12 pieces. I got 12 pieces out here. You can probably get more than that if you're quick about it. But, yeah. So, and, and as you can see, like, there's flour. It's all good. So we'll put that right about there. Get this other one pretty quick. Boom. This is just an Oster $20 waffle maker. You just use what you got. That's, that's the one thing. You don't have to have anything fancy. These two pieces will actually kind of fuse together and make one big one. But uh, don't touch it. It's hot too, yeah. So it might make sense to have like a mitt or something on. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god, I love it. Well, I was gonna, I don't know, take longer to cook. <laughs> Why do you keep holding it? Because I'm trying to make. <laughs> you probably. Explain, explain why you keep holding it. What does it do? Uh, I think it closes, it holds it, I don't know, it no, probably no. gives it a shape maybe that I'm looking for. No, no, it puffs up, remember? That too, who knows? <laughs> this is hot. Well, the good news is you can end up the bad parts at Ryan. There, we'll call that one good. So, I'm gonna pull that up. These one, I didn't put them too close together. But, you know, normally kinda, yeah. Boom, there is two. We'll put them closer together this time. Cause it normally comes like, almost like a big Belgian waffle type deal. Yeah, so no, I, I do hold it down at first to help give it the shape, um, to help. And then I, it's hot. If you try this at home, make sure you have a fire extinguisher. <laughs> I am by no means a professional cook. Um, that is not my goal. My goal is to be like, eat what I want, make what I want, and sometimes I worry about the consequences later. But here we go. See, now this is what I was trying to do the first time. Yeah. No, no trickery this time. <laughs> Don't get lazy on me, Brian. I'm not getting lazy. When did you personally really like start cooking? 
So, like what really got you going? I remember, like, you know, with my mom, me and her to cook around. Well, she'd try to get us all to cook, make us cook, and she'd go all crazy and cook like 120 different kinds of cookies. Made thousands one year, and I think over time I started like really, really liking to cook what I like. Cause I, I have an issue. I like things to be clean and whatnot. So going out to eat is like really. I like to go somewhere. Try to go somewhere nice. But um, anyway, so cooking at home for me is doing my is making everything the way I like it, how I like it. It's a little cheaper than going out, especially nowadays. Um, but I like to cook. I've probably started. I've cooked here. I probably the, honestly the last eight years or more. I've really kind of um, really enjoyed it, but I've always enjoyed it. It's just I remember being like young and I made something and it, it wouldn't turn out, and then all of a sudden it's like I don't know what switch, but something went. Because I remember making pumpkin pie one time and totally not turn out, and then like the second time I made it, it was like perfect, so I kept making it. Paid more attention. I watched videos. Um, try to learn. I'm, I mean, I'm, pr my mom has had a lot of impact on me cooking, but um, I've really do it my way now is the thing no 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 it's okay little buddy you're still there oh well accidents happen we don't care Alrighty. i think i'm doing pretty good normally we're out of mixture i know it's boring we'll probably edit a bunch of this crap out oh yeah <laughs> except for the burning part yeah it's not safe at home we'll show them what not to do <laughs> now let's address the apron you have on. What's the deal? Oh. I went shopping one day at a kitchen store. I got me an apron and her an apron. Mine somehow disappeared. And so I... <laughs> oh, so this is Christina's? <laughs> I got it for her. I yeah. I had a blue one. She had this thing. And, well, it still might have had all the bows. I don't remember. But mine was blue, but I ain't tripping over that. I mean, aprons do come in handy, especially if it depends on what you're making, because you splatter everywhere on your shirts. I don't know if that's too big of a stack or not. Ah. What happened to the green thing? I put it up, get it out of the way. All right, this should be good. Just want to make sure. I think we're good. Well, I guess these two did have probably the most, especially that one over there on the left, but I think we're good. But uh, oh yeah, so as I said, they kind of go together. It's like, yeah. Alrighty. The first thing I'm gonna do is some powdered sugar, and we're just gonna kind of all over the top. You know, on the plate, it's fine. There, you know. Got some fresh washed fruit. And I'm probably not going to put a bunch of it on top. I'll probably just put it around it. Um, you know, then people can kind of have what they want. So good and so tasty. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks for sticking around. Until next time, it's cooking with Gary. <laughs> so freaking, I told you it sounds so lame. <laughs>